So today I'm going to walk you through how we capture sound for our various um, broadcasting platforms that's on YouTube and on Facebook here at the Hill Life Church. And so this is our tech booth. Um, thanks to our head pastor who's made all this possible. God bless him so much wherever he is, Pastor Daniel OMG. And so use them. This PC is an HP Tower. See an HP Tower workstation. That's what we use for our main mixing okay, for the production purposes. And then we use this Optiplex for the streaming. So we use NDI network or the NDI technology to capture from here to there. So we use the load on this PC or this uh, production mix. So um, let's go straight forward. So I'm playing some audio um, from some of our instruments. Up there and then you can see the sound picking over here and there's our sound coming in over here I'll show you some stream mix so you can see several ways of doing it but then this currently works for us best um, I'll explain later so we use the USB cable and then through to the PC down there that's our production PC the main one doing a mix for the um, mixes we have separate passes for the stream and that's um, on mix 13 and 14 so it's a link is a stereo bus or stereo mix for the stream mix 13 and 14 what then you do? Um, the first thing is um, you go to settings if you're using a studio live personas. If you're luckily using that, if you're not, I think you can find your way through. But then the basic thing is to use the USB back here to the PC, and then you are good. So when you go, you go to you click on home button and then you go to setting system. Sorry, and then you're going to see um, the USB compatibility mode. So you enable this. Actually, you should also enable the interface mode. I was researching on that, but over here, when I do that, it gives me. It doesn't allow me route my my mixes to my USB sense. Yeah, that way. So this way works for me. So you can read about it. Yeah. So first of all, when you insert this USB into the the PC, the broadcasting mix, you should see um, this WDM. Uh, studio like that you have to download them um, the capture the drivers so i have this capture there is something capture over here they are all personal products so when you go out I'll, I'll share the link in the description so you can go look at this or go check it so you should see um, this showing up over here the studio live wdm we have wdm one and two that's channel one and two the BDM 3 and 4, the BDM 5 and 6, I think it continues, but over here it's just showing this for us. And then I prefer, uh, preferably want to use 1 and 2, 1 or 2, but actually it's 1 and 2. So when you do that, it's not going to come straight forward, you have to route it. So we are going to look at how to do the routing on our mixer. So you go to home, you select your route, uh, audio routing, and then you go to digital patching so over here I've already routed it that's why you can see the sound peaking over here I already showed you that uh, a keyboard is playing up there maybe you can see the sound peaking over here so I already mentioned um, we are using a mix 13 and 14 as a stereo mix for our stream bus as a stream bus 13 and 14 over here. and then you 
you can see the name up here as stream so when we come to the home you go to the desire routing and then the desktop patching i'm sending my usb sent since the cable we are using is a usb so it's a usb sent you select your usb sent and then the first thing i'm going to say this is going to be the assigned source is going to be um, channel one so it goes channel one channel two chromatically that way but remember uh mix or the output mix is a separate bus i want to send if you want to send assuming in your church or your organization you want to send the main um, left and right then you can do it left and right main left and right so you just select usb1 and then you click on this and then you just scroll and then you can find your main left and right but then over here um, our own condition is different and we want our uh, stream sound uh, experience to be different too so we separate them we don't use a house for that so we created a separate bus for that so yeah so our usb one is going to be our mix 13 so when you click here you click here and then you scroll to find your mix 13 mix 13 we are doing left and right so mix 13 let's tell you and then the second is already on mix 14 so when you get that you are good and that you are going to see the audio playing over there so assuming i change them let me just show you something assuming i change it i change this to um, change it so currently we have just there's a stereo bus but currently we have just one channel to the desired um, output stream channel and i'm going to see over here you see just one channel playing instead of it being to the stereo and then when you route it wrongly you're going to get the desired output or what you want so So when I come to my mix 13, you see I have we have the kick, we have the snare, we have our hi-hats, we have all our input over here. And then you see uh feathers, the levels that works for us, giving us a desired output we want over here. And then the mix output, that's this uh, the stereo mix, mix 13 and 14. See the level what's the unity. Then we have our EQ for the stream, the entire stream mix over there. So that's how we send our stream. So now let's go to our production mix. We are here on our production PC. The PC we use for the production just and mixing purposes. So I already have it here, but then I'll do a demo for you. So when you do all I said, where you when you insert your USB cable at the back of your mixer and then to your PC or your computer. And then you install those drivers and you are able to see the Studio Live WDM. I'll send links, you should read on that and you get it. When you're able to see that, then you come to when you open your broadcasting software, you could be using any of them, but then for this purpose I'm using Vmix. Uh, Vmix um Pro 24, yeah. So you go to your input and then you select your um, audio input, and then you are going to see the studio live, um, yeah, the audio devices over here. So the one and two we are using, remember, we routed our uh, stream mix to um, one and two, so you are going to use one and two. If you use um, three and four, it's not going to come, or it's not going to show. Just, let me just demo it for you to see. You see, this is not the real sound, it's just speaking. Um, maybe electrical noise or something. But then, if you go to the one and two, you can see it is still playing the same thing. I already have it here. And then I already have it, I, I, I just added this, this playing. So after adding it, you can work on your EQs. So I've then showed you how to add it. So. Let me just open our 
processing on this one so you see so it's over here the audio mix size the the one i've already added that we use and these are the processes so the processing we have on this so the audio device is 100 we have our gain to 7. this may depend on the kind of pc you are using and the environment yeah so over here this what works for us and then looking at the output we want and the experience we want it gives us what we want so it depends on the pieces actually i tested two pieces and then i'll show you i'll later show you the optiplex this one this optiplex is a dell optiplex over there when i use the same system settings or structure for it with the same volume levels it gives you some clipping effects which is very bad and sometimes it doesn't give you the lows you want so sometimes um the kind of piece you are using also matters. Back to our audio processing on our sound capture for our stream. So you can see our delay mostly when you are doing some of this production. For what I have experienced, um, the sound is always faster than the the like as the graphics, the video feed, and the lower test and everything. They are always faster than that. So you add a delay. Some people have the video deck where they can fuse everything together before bringing it into um, um, whatever broadcast system. But then over here we are, we are not using a, a we don't have a video deck. We just have this 18 mini picking a um, video source or uh, video feeds yeah but then uh then is that the processing it's our video deck okay so the video stuff always delay so we add a delay so this delay in milliseconds works for us you can see over here a delay in milliseconds that works for us so 171 that works it really matches the audio and the video output Sometimes I wonder, they say, um, lights travel faster than sound, but when it comes to some of these things, I really not read into it, but then if you have, if you know why it happens, you can leave a comment so that we all learn from you. Now, I'm not using any plugin, there's no plugin over here, there's a comp uh, EQ, this is an EQ that works for us for now. We always fine tune to get the best, so it is not a one time setting. It's it's a progressive setting so every time and now when you have to try something you do it to get the desired um, output or result you want there's a compression level there's a noise gate at 90 db minus 90 sorry and then our channel channel uh, mixer you see the stereo one and two so if you lower one you can see it in the main mix so they are all at the same level so we have a balance and you have a channel matrix that's over here so those are the processings we have on the on the audio coming in from our mixer studio live 32 personas into our production pc that's a media production pc and then uh, we use the ndi technology so NDI technology helps us. So we have a switch, kind of a, a modern router switch over here. Mm. Over here, so it's from Huawei. Yeah, so that's our internet source. And then it's also safe as a, you know, it's a switch. So a gigabyte, uh, is it uh, one gigabyte or something switch you should use? It's recommended in my research. Mm. So we use that one. So you go to, with that one, I'm sure there, there are a lot of um, training materials on that. When you go to your NDI, you, I enable um, the one and two outputs. You can see from here. There's one and two over NDI over here. So I have NDI installed over here. I install all the NDI tools. Uh, what are they? NDI, NDI, NDI tools. You'll see them. So we have 
all the NDI tools installed. So, so just install all of them on the PC, on both pieces. We have them running on both pieces. Same for this um, Dell PC. These are streaming um, PC. It's just for just streaming and nothing else. We don't want to bet in the production PC or the PC that does the mixes. This over here we do our recording. But over here is just for streaming. Sometimes you can save other purposes. We can send feed from here to there. That's right. So NDI, you can see in my setup. In the setup above, you can see um, yeah the NDI setup up there. So it is picking feeds directly from the the main production PC into this one, so that we can have or we can control what we put in house and then what we put out on the streaming. Yeah. So this NDI technology can enable you pick your individual inputs over here into this one. So it is NDI is very incredible. So you just make sure you're on the same network. So this PC, both PCs are on the same network. And then you just right click and then you go to your NDI desktop over there and then you can see everything from the other PC over here. So whichever ones you want you just add them. Maybe sometime some other time I'll make a tutorial on that. And then it works fine. It works fine. And then we do our recording, we set our streaming setups and then you go so basically this video was for how to capture audio and I noticed the NDI captures the the feed and the audio directly here so you don't have to worry about getting audio or whatever so both of them the synced video and audio comes in the same way from the main mix and then it comes in the same way over here so you don't worry about anything audio stuff over here the only thing is whatever thing you change over here comes in here as your main mix or you can be changing something else over here so that's that for the audio there are several ways of doing it we have um, an audio interface here the Yamaha AG06 mixing console series um, the reason we are not using this at the moment is it gives some you know, electrical noise makes some noise it's very undesirable so we decided to put it on hold, but it is set up so you can also use it it works very well so you can use it. you can use an interface so the the mixer is is also an interface it has an interface a built-in interface and we, so we don't want to be passing through processing and all that stuff so somebody can also ask so if i'm using this or my sound capture how about if I want to also multi-track or do a multi-track recording so the the, the pro broadcasting PC can do the same it can carry out to those actions actually I have a studio one installed over here so we can uh, multi-track and be doing a multi-tracking and at the same time your production will be going with your audio giving you the only thing it's doing is giving you audio into your mix or into your production so I have a, a mix template over here so you can see the peaks from what you are playing up there coming in so you can do your multi-tracking and then Perhaps the only thing is you should have a strong or a good PC to be able to manage or carry out those stacks so that it doesn't bed in or brings any kind of latency to your production out there. It's much easier to get Thank a clean speech time. only vocal mix audio into your streaming, but at times quite challenging getting a clean band or choir audio mix for streaming. This is not the best of the best. I have heard better live stream sounds. From here, getting the best super quality audio for your stream, I think you would need to properly mix and apply some third-party audio plugins and mastering as is done in some mega churches like Bethel, Hillsong, and the rest. Thank you for watching and kindly subscribe to my channel for more contents.